All right, I want you guys to go back in time a little bit. I want you to think about, you know, back when you were in school, elementary, middle, maybe even high school. Um, you ever been in a class where the class is just kind of out of control and the teacher, you know, gets on you and just kind of collectively is like, you guys, you're out of control, you're doing X, Y, and Z, you're acting up, basically. And, you know, truthfully, the, the class is a little unruly, right? We've been in those classes, and but there's always a couple guys, a couple gals, you know, they're quiet, they're kind of minding their own, but it's not really involved in it, right? They're not the ones really causing the trouble that's got the teacher talking about, you know, how rambunctious and, you know, out of sorts this class is, right? We all, we've all can kind of picture that scenario. Well, that kind of reminds me a little bit of, of what we have at 125 this year at NCAA Wrestling, where, and, and rightfully so, and in those teachers' defense, rightfully so, but 125 has been out of control, the most inconsistent, up and down, topsy-turvy weight class we have ever seen, okay? That's just my opinion. That's the opinion of most people that have followed the sport for a while. It's like, I've never seen anything like this. Number one seems to be a curse. You got guys that were number one at different points that are unranked at other points in the season. That, you don't really see that. But there's a few of those good students, those good wrestlers, those consistent wrestlers, that they don't really fit the meme of 125. They don't fit that theme that we've seen with these 125. So I'm gonna talk about those four wrestlers. And maybe there's others, but I looked pretty thoroughly through the list. And I found four that don't really fit the description. They don't fit the stereotype of this out of control group. These guys have had it together start to finish throughout this year. Okay, starting with Luke Stanich of Lehigh. This is a name I did not think I would be saying this year at any point in time. First of all, I think he was thought of as kind of a 33. He's a big 25, right? So that, one. Two, it seemed like the the thought was he was going to be redshirting. But that all aside, part three, we did not expect him to have this start to the year. Even if we knew, hey, Luke Stanch is going right away 125, no one was predicting this for the Lehigh true freshman. This guy is sitting at 10 and one this year. He's wrestled seven ranked wrestlers. That's a lot. Most of these wrestlers at 125, they wrestle seven ranked guys. It's gonna go different which way. Six of those, he's won. He's lost to one ranked wrestler. That was Troy Spratley, who very, very tough wrestler for Oklahoma State. He's beaten number six, Cooper Flynn. He's beaten All-American, Eric Barnett. He just beat Brett Unger, and he beat three other ranked wrestlers this year. So he has been absolutely solid they say his hand fighting is really what what can separate him but he can wrestle from everywhere and he's been consistent all year long so he doesn't fit the narrative neither does this next guy someone who hawkeye fans were very excited for coming into this year but you weren't sure exactly where he would fit but you knew the level at 125 was dropping and it was losing some really high power talent so you knew drake ayala is going to be in the mix now he has one loss in the year He's 11 and one, but his wins this year, I think separate him from, from the class. And it's why John Kozak and JD Rayer decide, hey, this is the number one ranked guy in America for now. And, and here's why he's earned that ranking. He's beaten number five, Caleb Smith. He's beaten number four, Jory, Jory Volk. He's beaten Pat McKee, a, a former real thorn in his side, a guy that beat him several times in previous years. He's beat him twice now, okay? He's got seven ranked matches, just like Sanchez. He has six wins okay his one loss is to to brandon kaler of oregon state now i want to talk a little bit about this match for a couple reasons one this is not exactly losing to a brandon kaler is not exactly emblematic of total you know inconsistency right um brandon kaler is a past all-american for oregon state he is tough right but more than anything if you watch this match and i did he was in control of this match start to finish and then at the very end when He's pushing to build his lead. He tries to slide by and basically pulls Kaler into himself. And Kaler says, thank you very much. Double legs him and wins the match just like that. You know, Drake had it and then he lost. So it wasn't like a really bad match. It was one tactical blunder that cost him that match. Does that make sense? If there is a difference, right? Then going out and getting beaten and beaten down and beaten soundly. That's not what we, what we saw. We saw a blunder from a guy. And listen, the, the pictures of Drake coming out of that event, that was the most sucked out I've seen Drake Ayala look. So I don't know if the, the cut was a thing, but since that time, he's been nails. He's looked really, really good. Looked good 
uh, Monday against Pat McKee again. He had to kind of dig deep there, had a hard time getting off the bottom, got away, got a takedown, got another takedown to win 8-5. So he's been, he's been really tough this, this year. Um, so he's been very consistent, no doubt about it. Seven ranked matches, just one loss. That's pretty good for this weight class. Next guy I'm going to talk about um, is someone who was sort of, it's ironic because last year I would say this guy's style is emblematic of 125 as a whole. Up and down, exciting, but you never know what you're going to get. And that's Missouri's Noah Certain. This guy's had real variance in his uh, in his results. He's had variance within his matches. He's this high flyer. He ha- hits these big moves, but he makes these mistakes. But he's been rock solid this year. 10-1 on the year. Four ranked uh, matches. Uh, he's won three of them. His lone loss is to, is to Cooper Flynn of Virginia Tech, who's been tough this year. He kind of missed. Cooper's maybe the one guy that could slide in this list, but really he hasn't been wrestling until really late in the year. Doesn't have a ton of matches at, at this point. Um, but Cooper Flynn's been solid. But that's his only loss. And he's got wins over former number one, Nico Provo, who is one of the more up-and-down wrestlers this year. And he also beat Jory Volk, who's ranked number four in America right now. Jory has been out in the streets start to finish. He's got a lot of good wins, but he has a lot of losses as well. Um, so Noah Certain for Missouri has been really, really tough all year long. And he's been quite consistent, quite consistent, especially compared to previous years for Noah Certain. The last guy I'm going to bring up is the only wrestler on the rankings that I can find that is undefeated. He's 10-0. and 0. Now, 10-0, and 0, I've been kind of giving you the rundown, seven ranked matches, seven ranked matches, four ranked matches. He's got one ranked match, but he did win it, and he is undefeated, 10-0. and 0. And I'm talking about Penn State's Braden Davis. Now, coming into the year, I, I did not think, and I don't think many Penn State or NCAA wrestling fans thought they would be talking about Braden Davis because the, the thought out of Penn State was, well, they've got the returning starter, Gary Steen. They've got Robbie Howard off of injury. Robbie Howard was a 2-2 two and two guy as a true freshman in NCAAs. you got Kurt McHenry transferring in. Certainly, Braden Davis, as a true freshman coming in, is not going to be the guy that emerges. But he's emerged and... Um, separated himself as the clear best 125 pounder for Penn State and you know Braden was a was a good recruit he was a, he was a good high school wrestler but he wasn't a guy who you kind of identify as like like we are a Luke Lillidal when he comes in like someone that can wrestle right away and contend right away that's not kind of how Davis was viewed externally right and and that's true for Penn State fans the, the Penn State fans weren't talking about Braden Davis until he it was clear that he was the starter this year right uh, the thought was his his brighter days are coming in future years, not this year. But it's this year, and it looks like he's going to be the guy for Penn State. And now, only one ranked win. It's not a lot of data against ranked wrestlers. But the one guy he did beat, Brandon Kaler. Call back to him. He's the guy that beat Drake Ayala, number one. And if you watch this match for Davis, it was dominant. It was not close. It was not competitive. He was all over him. He went to Oregon State and took it to Brandon Kaler who is as seasoned as they come, right? And this is a true freshman. And there's a lot to be excited about with Davis because he's really offensive. He attacks a lot. He appears to be the right size for 125. He seems strong enough. The question for me, and, and tests, bigger tests are coming, right? It's, it's pretty rare to have wrestled the majority of your schedule and only have one you know, All-American, one ranked guy on your, on your schedule. So. He's going to enter the Big Ten schedule. He's going to have potentially Michael D'Agostino uh, this Friday against Michigan. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting this on, what is it, Wednesday. Um, he'll be wrestling D'Agostino, and that's that's a perfect test for someone like Braden Davis. If you want to find out where you are on the mat, wrestle Michael D'Agostino. He's great from the top position. He's great in these scrambles. So that'll be a really, really strong test for Braden Davis, who has answered all the questions right now and cemented himself as the, the clear guy. So... 125, it's been a really fun wait. And I, I love the chaos. I love the up and down nature. But let's give a little credit to the to these guys who have been consistent start to finish this year. 